Get in the game with NFL Sunday Ticket from Rev TV. You'll get every game every Sunday afternoon in crystal clear HD. That's over 220 football games for the entire regular season. Plus, NFL Sunday Ticket gets you up to eight live games on one screen with Game Mix. You'll get that died and woke up in football heaven experience when you include NFL Red Zone, a channel dedicated to every scoring play from every game and all your fantasy football teams. Get in the game with NFL Sunday Ticket. Call 601-8992 today. A primary school teacher shot and killed in cold blood. This as her school reacts to the shocking news. No gender equality referendum this year, according to Dr. Vernon Nottage. Plus, the first men charged for gang-related offenses. We've got those stories and more tonight. I'm Kyle Joaquin, and NB12 starts right now. Three people were shot in two separate incidents, claiming two lives Wednesday night. In one incident, a fourth grade teacher was shot and killed as her car crashed into a nearby traffic light. With few clues and no motive, police are still on the hunt for the killer. Relatives of Joel McIntosh clung to one another for support last night as their fears were confirmed. The 39-year-old mother of two had been found dead, sitting upright in her car with gunshot wounds about the body. The lights of her Toyota Corolla still beaming into the wall where it crashed. According to Assistant Commissioner of Police Stephen Dean, police showed up to the scene just after 8 thinking it was a traffic accident. The officers arrived on the scene. On an exam, they met a Toyota Corolla vehicle crash into a wall. Um, a further examination of the vehicle revealed that there was a female, a lifeless body of a female inside with an apparent gunshot, gun, apparent gunshot wound. On the scene, many questions to find out exactly what happened were asked. There have been many theories, including the victim being a witness in a murder trial. However, Dean dismissed them as rumors. At the moment, police believe this was a random act of violence. Our news team understands one of her children may have been in the car during the attack, but Dean couldn't confirm. We are hearing that, but we have to do an investigation to determine exactly if that is so. We wish to put out a public appeal to anyone who might have been passing in this area around that time, who might have seen the vehicle. Immaterial to how the information might be. It might be a small piece of information, but we need members of the public to assist us now and determine what might have happened here tonight. Several bullet holes could be seen on the car, one to the rear end of the driver's side and two in the driver's window. Our news team went to Queens College, a stone's throw away from where she was murdered. Their administration had gathered to make sense of the tragedy and decide how they would tell the children and arrange counseling for her colleagues. We're distressed. We are absolutely in sorrow, deeply painful over this tragic loss of life, this senseless loss of life. And um, we are now here at the Queens College campus tonight um, to prepare for the beginning of school early in, in the morning to make sure we have enough counselors in place and uh, persons to deal with both the grieving students and the grieving members of staff. Especially. She's a very creative, outgoing, joyful person. She's contributed to the lives of our students and contributed to the development of Queens College. We're going to miss her. It's just, I mean, the fact that we're here, as soon as we heard, nobody could believe it. She was full of life, full of exuberance, had the children's interest at total heart all the time, had two wonderful sons. We had a conversation this morning about her son who was um, participating in a a SRC function in the high school. She has a younger son in grade one. She loves her sons. She loves the children at school. It's just a total tragic loss. And when Dr. Rej Eldon, a member of QC's Board of Governors, said, with the death of a loving teacher in such a violent fashion, he feels as if 
no one is safe anymore. We are so concerned that we don't seem to be getting a handle on the senseless violence in the country. And every time something like this happens, the group that is affected uh, are, are the ones who are concerned, and then it moves on to somebody else. McIntosh would be one of three people shot within a matter of two hours last night. As police processed that scene, shots rang out through White's Edition off Camp Road. Two men were shot. One died on the scene while the other was taken to hospital and remains in stable condition. These two latest killings pushed the murder count for the year to 130. While the entire Queens College community has been left devastated by the death of Joyelle McIntosh, and today they called for an end to the continued violence on the nation's streets. Our Dana Smith visited the school this morning where terrible teachers, staff, and parents remembered the life of a dynamic young woman who touched many lives. Here's her report. It's overwhelming and it can't come any closer than this. The crime can't come any closer than this. We need to come together in a concerted effort to do something about the senseless violence in our country. We are destroying ourselves and our future. The whole school is in a state of shock and disbelief. This murder has affected so many lives, not just her family, not just her children, but the children at Queen's College. We've had children from grade one all the way up to grade 12 in the school this morning Everybody is devastated. Every child knows about it and does not understand why. It was an emotional morning here at Queens College as parents, students, teachers and staff tried to come to grips with the death of Joyelle McIntosh, who was described by those who knew her as a generous and promising young teacher whose life was taken way too soon in an act of senseless violence. Dr. Dharma Tiagi said McIntosh was a mother figure to his young daughter, Prachi, and was largely responsible for Prachi winning last year's Scripps Spelling Bee competition in Washington, D.C. at the age of 11 years old. He said McIntosh spent nearly three hours with Prachi practically every day after school, and his daughter has been left distraught by the news of her death. She treated my daughter just like a fam her own family, and um, she always went an extra mile to um, coach her, to, um, to um, actually to build up the knowledge. And um, she, more than anything else, she was, she was one of the best individuals, best persons you, you could come across. And uh, she was so energetic and positive. Vice Principal of Foundation Years at QC, Virginia Minnis, said students are taking the death of their teacher particularly hard, and the school has brought in guidance counselors to help console the children. Well, today is a very sad day for our students in the classroom, particularly the students in grade two and the students who are in grade four, mainly because she would have influenced their lives, interacting with them. Last year she taught in grade one, and so those students have now moved on to grade two, and quite a number of them are in tears. Grade four students, and especially her class, there was not a dry eye in that classroom this morning. McIntosh's two children, a five-year-old and a 13-year-old, the latter of whom was reportedly in the car when she was shot, also attend QC. Minnis said counselors visited their home this morning to offer whatever assistance they can. Minnis said she herself is also deeply hurt by the killing, but she's trying to keep strong for the students. Some girls saw fit to demonstrate their love for their teacher, I guess in memorial of her. They went outside, they came back with their hand full with these lovely pink flowers and they said Mrs. Minnis I want to put these on our desk these are for her that is very touchy and you know just to see the students boys um, weeping um, parents drying tears it's not a good scene to see the children crying this morning. Alexia Savosis acting deputy head of the primary years said her and McIntosh were good friends and she will remember her as an intelligent insightful and passionate teacher. She was full of life, and just like her name, full of joy. And we are very saddened, and today we express our sympathies to her family. Our children here are deeply saddened. They're extremely subdued this morning. They are in need of comfort, and this has affected hundreds of children today. It is a senseless, 
murder. There was no need for this, and we have taken this very much to heart because we've lost a wonderful, productive citizen who was in the fields working with the young children here at Queen's College. And we need to take stock of that and look at where we need to go with this country. Reverend Christopher Neely, president of the Bahamas Conference of the Methodist Church, said McIntosh will be mourned and remembered fondly as someone who was there for her children, always smiling and encouraging them to be their best. He said he hopes they never have to walk this road again and appealed for an end to the nation's continued killings. The Board of Governors and the Methodist Church believes that tackling the problem of crime needs to be the number one priority in this country. We need to drop everything else and to focus upon this one thing that's threatening to destroy us. So today, um, as we mourn that loss, we look forward with hope to coming together as a community and each of us making a contribution to the good of our country. We are really prisoners on our own island. We don't have the freedom to do as we please. We cannot go about as we like because our lives are at risk. A lot of parents say it's senseless. They don't understand. It was early in the evening and nobody feels safe. Teachers say there have been deaths in the school before, but nothing like this. And they never imagined that yesterday would be the last time they saw Joel McIntosh. From Queens College for NB12, I'm Dana Smith. In other news, though he has ruled out any chance of a constitutional referendum on gender equality being held this year, Minister with Responsibility for Elections Dr. Brendan Nottage told NB12 it could happen early next year. And despite numerous delays, Nottage says the Christie administration is committed to passing the four constitutional referendum bills. Vani Two reports. Following multiple delays, National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage says the long-awaited referendum on gender equality could be held during the first quarter of 2016. The gender vote was originally expected to take place before June 2013, but after several setbacks, Prime Minister Perry Christie told NB12 the referendum would happen no later than June of this year. Nottage says while it's obvious 2015 is out of the question, the Christie administration is committed to making it happen early next year. I do not think that it is likely to be this year, but I do think that uh, firstly, the, the party continues to be committed to passing the relative, the relative, uh, the relevant legislation uh, to introduce equality, and uh, it would now have to be during the beginning, uh, the first quarter of next year. When the bills were introduced in Parliament, Christie said the government intended to have those bills debated and passed in both houses of Parliament in the shortest possible time. However, the four constitutional referendum bills remain in the committee stage of the House. Nottage says government will not set another date until those bills are passed. Well, that, what we are going to do is to um, complete the passage of the uh, referendum bills through Parliament and provided that we have the necessary numbers supporting the bills, we would then determine the date for a referendum. His comments come one week after Anglican Bishop Leish Boyd said he is dismayed and alarmed that there has been no constitutional referendum as promised by the government and no date set for a referendum to take place. Nottage expressed regret over the delays, insisting government was hoping for unanimous support. However, he says at this point, government will move forward as long as it has the necessary votes in parliament. Well, it is regrettable that there have been numerous delays. We have already been trying to almost guarantee that we would get the necessary parliamentary support in order for a referendum to be held. Um, we have now decided that notwithstanding the fact that we do not have the, the unanimous support that we hoped you would get, that we will go through with the process. And uh, if the process allows us to proceed, then we will proceed and hopefully pass the bill. MPs on both sides have expressed concern about one or more of the bills. The four bills must in each instance be approved by at least three quarters of the House and Senate. 
Nodich says that with proper public education, he believes residents can convince their members of parliament to support the bills. Uh, that, that would cause even some of those members of parliament who are uncertain about whether they support all of the bills. But I, it, it is my view that people in the com constituencies and the family islands and particularly the family islands, but also in New Providence, who have now been fully acquainted with the, with the um, content of the bills. I believe that, that they will support it, and I think that, that will have an impact on their members of parliament. Following passage by the Senate, the bills must be approved by a majority of voters in a referendum. All of the bills address gender equality issues within the Constitution. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonig Tude. When NB12 returns, the first men to be charged for gang-related offenses in the country. Stay tuned.